What's going on everybody? My name is Michael Weir and today we are talking about a brand new horror movie, Consecration. And if you're asking Mike, what is Consecration? Well, it's a question I had to ask because I had no idea this movie was even coming out. It wasn't on my radar at all. And that's a bad sign for horror movies because when a studio just drops a horror movie in the winter, January, February, it's a very bad sign. Usually it means they have no faith in the movie and it's going to be awful. But I wanted to see a movie and my choices were go rewatch Titanic, watch Magic Mike's Last Dance, or Consecration. So I chose Consecration. Let's do the review. Don't be scared. There's but one God. And so guys, the movie Consecration is written and directed by Christopher Smith, and it stars Jenna Malone as Grace. Now, Grace is a woman who does not believe in God, religion, or faith. She grew up in it, and when she became an adult, she said, I'm going to go this way, and I'm not going to believe in any of that stuff anymore. I believe in science. Whereas her brother, who also grew up in it, went this way and believes in religion to the point where her brother is a priest. But early on in the movie, Grace gets a phone call that her brother has died under mysterious circumstances that might be suicide, might be murder, and just might be something very unholy. And since Grace is the last living relative of her brother, she has to go to the convent to identify the body and research why he died because she thinks there's some sinister acts at play. And like every movie, that's the most I can give you without ruining it. If this movie sounds like a fun time to you, then you should go check it out in the theater. But with that said, let's talk about my likes and my dislikes for this movie. So my first like for this movie is going to be the cinematography. I think they did a really good job with a lot of the shots of this movie. There's some really cool angles. And the one I want to highlight the most is the beginning of the movie. Grace is in her apartment before she learns about her brother's death and the power goes out. And there's no jump scares, which I really appreciate, but just the way that they angle the camera while she's walking around her apartment in the dark is really creepy. And at a certain point, of course, there is something in the background of one of the shots and it's done so well that I really like that. Like that moment, I was I was kind of hooked. I was like, all right, this movie's got me creeped out. I like the angles of the camera. Let's see what else this movie can give me. The second thing I really liked about this movie is sort of a spoiler. So I'm going to throw up a quick spoiler warning. I'm not going to tell you exactly what it was, but I'm going to tell you what it's not. I like the fact that this movie is in the demon possession genre. However, that is not what's going on in this movie. And that's something I really liked. I liked that they could take the demon possession genre and they could do a twist to it to make it feel unique because it's not a demon possession. It's something else. It's sort of like in Season of the Witch when you're watching a movie you think is Nicolas Cage escorting a witch. It turns out she's a demon. There's a different, like, I like that. So in this, it's like a demon possession movie, but there's a twist. No, it's not that she's a witch, but I'm not going to give you any more hints. I like that. Again, it's just cool seeing a movie that comes out of a certain genre have a unique twist that makes the movie feel unique within that genre when we've seen an exorcism movie or a possession movie happen so many times. It's 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 nice to have that uniqueness. However, with all that being said, it did feel unique. It did feel fresh in the genre itself, but the movie is ambitious to a fault. And let's get into my dislikes. That's the first one. I feel like this movie really went for it. It tried to do something unique, something different. And I do give it a like for that. I do enjoy that about this movie. But my dislike comes in when they try to tie it all together, when they try to bring that ambitious storyline all together, it just didn't make sense. Like, there were too many holes in the story for me to believe what was going on. And then... If Even if I did, even if I was like, okay, all of that makes sense. This was happening while this was happening. It makes sense to me. They do something at the end that really doesn't make sense and I can't get into, but there's something going on that they really try to force you to believe can happen in this story and then they almost abandon it at the end. It's weird. So yeah, the movie's very ambitious. It has a unique idea to twist on those possession, religion, genre, but when it comes to a head... I feel like they didn't know how to close out this movie. The other dislike I have for this movie is the pace of this movie. It's not a jump scare a minute, and that's fine. Horror movies do not need to have jump scares in them. I want to be very clear about that because I know someone's going to go in the comment and be like, oh, you just need jump scares. No, I, I don't need jump scares. They're fun. Don't get me wrong. I like jumping in the movie theater. It's fun. However, I don't need them in a horror movie as long as the movie can creep me out. And while this movie did creep me out, the pacing of this movie was all over the place. I felt like it was too slow in times, and then I felt like it was going too fast in times. The movie deals with time where it tells a story that's going on right now, but it also tells a story of what happened before 
And then there's a whole other aspect of this movie that I'm not even going to get into because it'll be spoilery. So there's there's a weird pace to this movie where they're cutting back to scenes from things that happened in the past and then cutting back to now. And it's not a slow pace, slow burn that like pays off in the end, but it's also not a jump scare, quick paced movie where it's like, oh my God, they got to stop scaring me. It was like creepy moment and then a lot of storytelling and some backstory that wasn't necessarily always needed and then some flash forwarding even. It was weird because again, it's just the pace of this movie. If none of that made sense to you, that's how this movie went into my brain. Like none of it really made sense. It was very strange. The pace of this movie didn't work for me. With all that said, guys, overall, I will say that this movie creeped me out. There were elements of this movie that creeped me out. There were some things I liked about this movie, and I think the camera work was pretty good. But all that said, I don't think they tied the movie up very well, and the pace was enough to bore you to tears. I don't recommend this movie to people. And that's my review for Consecration. Guys, if you enjoyed this review, don't forget to hit the like and the share button. If you have seen Consecration, you've got thoughts and you've got comments, put those in the comment section down below, because I'd love to talk to you guys about it. I always answer the comments from people. It's just fun to do. I like talking to you guys about movies. And finally, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure you do that because I got a lot of content coming your way. We get Ant-Man and the Wasp, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, and Cocaine Bear before the end of this month. So check my channel out because I will be doing full reviews for all of those. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Well, guys, that's another review in the books for 2023. It's been a weird year so far, but I'm excited to see where it goes. If this is the first time you're visiting my channel, maybe you haven't seen all of my other reviews, you can check out all my 2022 reviews right there, or all the 2023 reviews I've done so far right there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all very soon.